Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's project, or the next several days project, is in our kitchen. So I started remodeling this kitchen, unfortunately, about six years ago. Took everything out, all the way down to the floor, tiled the entire floor after leveling it, installed new appliances, you know, the whole nine yards. Well, I was going to build all the kitchen cabinets myself, but I had to go on a business trip to Europe actually and while I was gone my wife outsourced the cabinet boxes. I have since built all the drawers and doors thus far but that's a lot of stuff to make and once I got the bottoms done and the drawers done I kind of ran out of steam. So today we we're going to start working on the upper doors. I had a drawing around here somewhere but anyway the upper doors thus far we're doing open concept so I need to do a drawer, drawer front for that upper door I did that it's kind of like a uh, pantry broom closet so essentially those upper doors and then I'll need to do that corner cupboard door I'll take you out in the garage and show you what the concept is so I've drawn it out because I don't do a very good job of remembering dimensions but it's going to be just a shaker style cabinet door like that but of course there's always a twist since the cabinet is divided my wife wants a glass panel in here and a wood panel in here so never done that before but we'll give it a shot this is just one by three poplar stock I got at Lowe's of course you have to dig through it all to make sure sure it's all straight and doesn't have too many marks in it I'm going to waste that much, but that's the best I can do. Now I will use this to mark for that door. This is the crossway style. I will use this to exactly mark the other two to get all three cut the same. I'll also put a mark on the side I'm going to waste so I don't cut on the wrong side of the line. That's happened before. I like to check to make sure they're the same. Good enough. There's a little bit of discrepancy in there, but in this instance, it's probably not even a 64th of an inch, so it should be fine. So this is what this door is going to look like. Plywood panel on the bottom, clear panel on the top. I don't know how Lowe's ran out of plywood, but I'll have a, they didn't have any of the half inch good plywood, but I've got a piece I can use as a sample to test the fit. Up at the top, this will be the top. This will be a clear panel. I don't know if I'm going to use glass, plexiglass, lex something. I'll figure that out later. So this panel will be dadoed in. So I need to mark where to end my dados and which which ones need the cut. And then we'll assemble the rest of this using pocket screws. I got out my router table and confirmed the last time I used it was for making doing the same operation so we're gonna mill a slot route a slot in the uh, styles for the door I guess they're styles and rails I'm no woodworking expert we have the two sides where we talked about going just a partial way and we have the top and the bottom which they can go the entire way because they're going to butt in you won't see that 
So we'll go ahead and knock these two out first and orientation of these isn't super critical but I did make the marks there so I'll do it on that side. And hold yours folks because it's loud. So there we go. And then the panel will fit. We'll slip in there like that, like that. So I guess I go from problems with my microphone, which this is a new one, so hopefully that's been solved, to problems with my batteries because it battery crapped out apparently through that. But anyway, this is the side of the door. I have run the groove that far to accept the panel and then the piece for the top glass portion will go here so I did not groove that. What I will probably do is put the door together and then we will route out for whatever glass I decide to use for that to fit in. We'll use that with a hand router. I could change the setup here but since I have this pretty well centered I don't really want to mess with it because it's not a lot of fun. Okay, so all the pieces are cut. I might wait till I get to plywood to start putting it together. I don't know. I have a few minutes tonight free, so I am going to work on putting this frame together. We're going to use the Craig pocket screw system. If you're not familiar with this, there's a drill bit that we'll use to drill a, a pocket and then they have a special screw that goes through the pieces and butts them together. You have to set it up according to your material thickness. We're already set at three quarters of an inch. The jig has, I don't know if you can see it, I had a hard time seeing it. On the back it has a mark you line it up with. That way it drills through on the back side and won't puncture the front. So the way I have done the other pieces, or other drawers, this will be the top, marked it, back top. Take this guide and go ahead and clamp it on there. Probably needs a little tighter than that. Kind of center it up, clamp it on there. Make your drill bit. There's the pocket. So, got a piece on the back. We will attach it such as that. Put a little glue on it. And there's certain length screws used for a certain thickness for this for three quarter inch thick it's inch and a quarter screws they have a flat head so they pull tight and they will pull the two pieces of material together without blowing it out so line it up flush flush in both directions.
and because that's drill stepped, it drills a flat bottom hole, so that screw has all that head surface to clamp it together with. And then there we go. You don't see anything from the front. So I'll go ahead and, since I don't have the plywood yet, I can put together half of this thing. And I've marked where everything needs to be. These are my routed pieces. Probably should drill it first, right? You could likely get away with one screw, but what the heck. More is better, right? I have made a mark where this piece needs to go. Sometimes it's nice to clamp both pieces down so it doesn't move, but I think I can hold it. the bottom piece. So there we go. Now the plywood will slip in that groove once I can locate a sheet of plywood. So apparently a pandemic brings about a shortage of plywood. So three trips to Lowe's, I have one sheet of plywood. It's a long story. So I'm gonna tell you, went last weekend, the one in High Point, out. Went today, the one in Kernersville after I left work. They had one sheet. Okay, I'll take that. Take it down. That was a little messed up on the edge. That's fine. Had to go find myself a cart because they're like filled with lumber laying in the aisles like with abandoned stuff. Go outside, get a cart, bring it back in, get the plywood off, get, them, get in line at the one register they have open and realize on the bottom of that sheet, not only was the edge tree up, there were a bunch of holes in the bottom. So I just abandoned the aisle with all the rest and left. Went to the Lowe's, back to the Lowe's in High Point and whole pallet of it. Uh, it makes no sense. So here we got a $40 sheet of plywood. Well, $36 sheet with my veterans discount. <clears throat> the blonde wood plywood primed on one side. Brand new Harbor Freight uh, edge guide. We'll see how that works. So I'm going to cut this off to length and then we'll cut it shorter and get our panels put together. By the way, these fake, fake DeWalt 18 volt batteries you can get on Amazon, they work pretty well and they're cheap too. So now that this panel's cut, hopefully fits. So far so good there. Something's a little bowed. All right, dropped into there. I'm gonna pull this out some. Typically, I don't do them this way. I was just trying to get ahead a little bit. Get 
some of the pre-glue up done. Put a little dab of glue in the middle. I know it'll probably obviously smear everywhere. But typically, I would put a dab of glue in the middle so it would adhere the center part of the panel. So I'm not gluing this all the way around because this plywood will probably expand and contract. And that, that'll just keep it from kind of staying centered. It, it should be fine either way. Probably don't even need glue. Probably, it probably does not even need to be glued. Go ahead and glue this a little bit. I've already put the pocket holes in the back on this side. These pockets are already in there. I can just hold it square with my finger, flat. leaves this middle style should probably verify that it's square it's pretty much right on There we go. I'll do the other one. We'll let that dry overnight and then we'll work on the glass panel tomorrow. So it's been about a week. You might notice this door looks a little smaller. The other doors I made, I've already installed, but the, for the glass installation portion, I had a dead battery on the microphone. So it was all silent and I hate doing voiceovers. This particular router bit has a bearing on it and the cutter and a base plate. So it will ride around the inside of the opening and only cut so deep as far as that uh, bearing will allow it to go. So we'll end up cutting a groove in that door and then we'll come back and we will drop the bit and plow out the rest of the top. It'll make more sense in a minute. So what we've accomplished is we have put a groove in that door, but we would not be able to get a piece of glass in there with that set up because it's captured. So I will raise, but, but we have the same reveal as the door so it won't look screwy from the front. So now, since we already wanted to keep that set up the same for both doors, we've already plowed off all that wood in the middle where we need it. We can just change the height here. No, we can't because that's going to get, that's going to be it fucked. Hmm. So there's the dilemma. What I should have done is done the other one first, and that's what I did on the other doors that are recorded without audio. So we may just do a voiceover on them and be done with it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I can't do the operation I wanted to do in the order I was doing it. I should have plowed out the top portion and then gone deeper and set that because I can't go backwards now because this bit 
is going to ride around the part that has already been cut and it'll make it even larger. It's on the back. I could probably deal with it, but I don't want to. But I have a rescue mission in mind when you do dumb stuff like me. I have a flush cutting bit. So I'll get this bit put in here and I'll show you how to rescue this situation. It's always best to unplug your machine. that bit will come out. It's a little, little warm, obviously. And then has a quarter inch shank. So let me see if I can find a quarter inch collet or a flush cut bit with a half inch shank. Seems odd that I would have that bit with a quarter inch shank and that one with a half, but this router has two collets. At least that's what I'm gonna call it. quarter and a half so I will replace this one with this one now I can install this bit so to recover from my mistake I just need to get the bearing to ride in the groove that's existing and cut off this portion on the back here. It would be also a good time to point out that make sure your screws are far enough away from where you're going to route into there because if that router bit were to hit that metal it would pretty much be the end of that router bit. So I'm going to eyeball this. I only need to really plow out about that much. So we'll try that right there. Let me take a little eyeball test. A little bit too deep. That screw is going to hit the bottom. Go a little less. That head of that bolt is probably going to drag on the bottom. I think that'll work. So there we go. There's our cutout for our piece of glass. Let me go ahead and do the other one. Since we're not hogging out a whole bunch of material, I probably don't need to clamp it down. Okay, next is the glass. So I have a piece of polycarbonate sheet right here. This is a leftover scrap from work. Just so happens the width is good. I'm gonna cut at this height using a jigsaw and a really fine blade. So height-wise, width-wise, that'll fit, but because of the rounded corners the router left us, I'll need to nip off these corners. When I did that before, I marked out the corners using a socket, and it was like an inch, inch, and an eighth socket, and I traced it. But I found that a Carmax container pretty much matches that perfect. So just butt it up, trace them out, and that should clean up those corners enough to where they'll drop in. Let's make sure. Yeah, that should work. And we'll cut the rest. There we go. 
I'll cut the other one and bring you back. So I'm reusing these rather cheap European style hinges that I salvaged from our old kitchen cabinets. Now this diameter is an inch and three eighths. If we can see it on here somewhere. Anyway, trust me, it's an inch and three eighths. And what I have here is an inch and three eighths Forstner bit. The Forstner bit drills a flat bottom hole that'll match the diameter of that hinge. On the other doors, I came up four inches from the bottom and found my center line, and then I marked it out with a square. I marked, if you can see that. This hinge almost needs to be right on the edge. You just barely leave any wood there. So I marked like an eighth of an inch. And then you can use the bit, kind of put the little pointer on the hole. And this doesn't have to be exact because these are going to get put in and then the door is going to get screwed to the cabinet. So we're going to eyeball that anyway. So that's about what you want. I've done this a few times. I'll drill down to right where the silver part disappears, and that should be the right depth. There. That doesn't blow through the back, and it sits flush. Now, to get it in the square, in the hole, I typically take my combination square, set it up at the bottom of the door, square the hinge up that way, and then put a little dent kind of where he wants the screw to start, right in the center of the hole. And then we hope these screws don't blow through the back of the door, actually the front of the door. Now we'll do the other end and then we can hang it up. Okay, so the hinges are in. All I have left to do is secure the glass in the door. I likely won't do that until after I paint it, but there's several ways to do it. You could use push points like the old fashioned windows. You just push them in and that holds it flat. What I'll probably do is rip down some pieces of oak that are real thin. I'm afraid that this poplar will split out. and pin nail through them or brad nail through them to hold it in but I don't think I'm going to do that till after I paint it. So let's go look at the finished product. I guess I should say partially finished product. So this is the set I started with on the cabinet. Pretty much the same, con I mean exactly the same construction. I just stuck some finished nails in there to hold the glass in to get the idea of what it looked like. I need to fine-tune them a little bit as far as fitment, but that's what we have, and then obviously I need to paint them, but I will probably wait till I get the other ones finished, probably for the whole kitchen, and then spray paint them, take them out back and spray paint them and clear coat them. Thanks for watching.